My name is Sharon Van Etten. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. We're here today recording a song in Philadelphia for Weather Day Music. Today I'm working with Kat Martino and Jeffrey Kish. They are both great songwriters and amazing musicians. I respect Kat a lot because there's not many people that I've been able to sing with. Kat and I have a lot in common as far as growing up with choir. That's how we learn to do harmonies. Kish has amazing taste with lushing out guitars and layers. He comes from more of a punk rock background. He does solo stuff as well. He'll play guitar kind of country for his solo project, Don Wire. How's your voice this early in the morning? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Especially right? for this part, because it's lower. So. I am originally from New Jersey. I moved to Tennessee. The boyfriend that I was with at the time wasn't very supportive of me, so I had to hide the fact that I wrote songs because he didn't think that I was good enough to perform in front of people. After six years of being told that my music was terrible, I moved back with my parents. They took me in under their wing and let me get my act back together. My music in the past was very down, very self-reflective because I had to hide it for so long. I feel a lot more confident and secure that I'm going into a direction that people can relate to. So let's just hear it back. Can I come in then? Uh, sure, if you want. I picked Love More because I feel that it sums up where I am at in my life while also summing up where I came from. That's fine. Okay. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel long. Okay. Um, it doesn't feel rushed either. No, it's a good pace. Yeah. Um, why don't we double the uh, harmonium real fast? Okay. I based it off of the very skeletal version of my basement recording. Harmonium, distorted tambourine, harmonies, and one synth. And I knew that that was the basic outline yeah. that I wanted, but I didn't know how to do it properly. Play it one more time because I need to get that level again because okay. I turned it up. Oh, <laughs> oh you got that. Didn't you? Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Oops. Sorry, right, that's all right. Hang on one second. Kish was on the bass drum and I was on harmonium. That's the core and the pulse of the song. Kat did percussion. She used the tambourine and the sand block. It added much more of a rhythm, more of a fluid motion to the song. Kish's guitar part was very much what I envisioned a piano part being. He added ebo in the very beginning of the song just to bring up the first movement of the dynamic. And then he added guitar layers with a little bit of delay that just helped it push it up to where it needs to be. Do what you said, do what you said, left over the sky, we're all soon fly. We did vocals for a long time. You'll hear the end of this chorus. <laughs> okay, and, I got it. And you tell me when the chorus is definitely done and when the moors are going to start, just, okay. just so I know where I'm supposed to punch in here. Okay. She made me love, she so you should move a little bit back. She made me love Second verse, you come right back in with a harmony again. But I think I would, I would like to experiment with hearing that just with the one voice again for half of that verse and then you come in so we can create more of a dynamic ride. The more harmonies we did, the more I wanted to get carried away. I felt like we were creating a river of harmonies that kept overlapping on each other, but I feel like it really works with this song. In Brooklyn, there are a lot of bands that support their friends. Peter Silverman from The Antlers asked me to sing on his record. It was one of the first records I got asked to sing on. Peter helped me realize that I, I had a lot of room to build on instrumentation and a lot more harmonies. Meeting people that are just full of love and supportive of their scene, how close-knit everyone is. It's definitely just given me a more positive outlook on my songs, and I feel like that's where they're going. Recording for Weather Vane has been a dream. I feel really lucky. I have never had this much at my fingertips, and so many minds involved that really were about the song and about making it as big and beautiful as possible. No tension, no dissonance, just encouragement and collaboration. I feel extremely lucky to have been picked for this project.
started out with Sharon and Kish laying down the basic track together. This is a lot, seems like a lot of work for a bass drum, but we have, a, we have a microphone inside the kick here, and then we've got this old WFL marching drum with actually with the original calfskin heads just as a resonator in front of the drum. And then we have a floor tom as, a, as an extra resonator in front of the bass drum. We have the AEA R88 as like a stereo kind of overhead. And then Amy's put the Coles 4038 out in front of the sort of resonating area of these drums. So we have the, the uh, harmonium mic'd up with the Charter Oak uh, S600. Uh, we're getting a little bit of lead through the glass here. So Amy actually put the stand up on these like pieces of foam and we're putting fiberglass in between the glass. There's two glass doors here and hopefully that'll cut out the bass drum coming through. After that basic track, we laid down a scratch vocal for Sharon. We laid down a synth bass we use the Korg MS-10 into the Retrospect juice box, followed by Kat's percussion tracks. Her sand block track went through the AEA R84 into some mysterious unnamed German Mike Pre prototype that UBK brought. The tambourine, uh, we used Kat's amazing brass tambourine. I thought it sounded awesome. We started Sharon's lead vocal with the same chain that we did her scratch vocal, but the harmonics in Sharon's voice almost seemed to overdrive the mic. So from there we moved to the R84, but that mic has enormous proximity effect, meaning it gets bassier and infinitely denser the closer you are to it. Uh, and it seemed the distance that she had to keep was injecting too much noise in the track. From there, uh, Amy suggested that we use the Charter Oak 538, and she placed it really low as she noticed that Sharon's voice seemed to project downward. He's playing a lot lighter now. Is he? Like a ton lighter. We did Kish's guitars on day two. He plays an SG with P90 pickups that sounded really great through our Bad Cat Wildcat 40. We had the Coles 4038 up close on the amp going through the Pacifica mic pre. And then in the room, we had the U67 going through the Pacifica. The signal was running out of his guitar into a Roland Space Echo. Uh, that's what all that really beautiful atmospheric effect is surrounding the guitar part. In fact, right where the drums kick in, you hear the tape get caught in the mechanisms of the tape echo, and it causes a quick drag. And that's totally by accident, but one of those things we absolutely have to do. Finally, it was time to mix. We initially recorded the song with percussion going from the beginning all the way to the end. I have sort of gotten completely used to the drum being in there from the beginning. Right. So we should sort of start messing with that a little bit soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just since like we've been listening uh -huh. to it that way for eight hours, maybe <laughs> go back and see if, what it's like the other way. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday because I'm so used to it where I kind of like it by itself now in the beginning. Yeah. But uh, Kish was saying, yeah, let's try it with, uh, without it at the beginning just because that's how I had With the drum, right? That's how without I the drum. Wanted it. Yeah. 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 yeah.